Now, you must never start your golf swing just like this with an early wrist hinge. Now, wrist hinge is important in the golf swing, but if we do it too early, it's gonna ruin our chances to have a good golf swing. So, let's describe that and how to do it properly. So I'm Jonathan Chan with Chan Golf. Let's dive right into it. Now, let's dive right into it. Why don't we want to be hinging the wrist straight away in the backswing? So, two reasons. One, because you are gonna start to have a lot of cupping in your left wrist very early. Two, you're gonna be having not enough width between your club and your body. It's gonna be getting a little bit too narrow. So, first one, cupping the left wrist. Why don't we want to do that? So, if we hinge that wrist too early, we're just gonna get that cupping. So, when that cup happens, let's say we got a standard grip, the club face is gonna to open too much. But then if we keep that cup all the way through our golf swing, not only are we gonna have this open club face, but we're also gonna have a steep shaft. Having cupping in the left wrist forces the club shaft to steepen. So you're gonna have open face and a steep shaft at the same time. So you're gonna be chopping down at it and you're gonna be leaving it out to the right with a big old slice as well, hitting weak golf shots. So that will really create that awful Horrendous shot. Obviously, you can't see the ball flight, but you could see how far right that started into my net there. So that's the first one. We don't want to be doing it because of the cup in the left wrist. So the second bit, like we said, narrow backswing, really narrow. So this is again a really hard thing to recover from in the golf swing. Early wrist hinge, very narrow backswing. So distance between club shaft and body. If that stays narrow you're gonna have a real hard time to get back onto the golf ball again. So, if I don't do anything to my body with a narrow backswing, let's say I move down ideally, see how elevated off the ground the club is gonna be. So, if I don't try to manipulate my body to get the club back into the ground again, because a narrow club will get the club close to you, as we said, which then, club close to you, more off the ground, we're gonna hit a shot like that, top it. That's a hardcore top, that was. So, we're gonna to top the golf ball. But most of you would do something with your body to make up for that, most of you would. What I normally see with players who have a narrow downswing because of their narrow backswing, they start to do this. They start to drop that trail side down. When that trail side drops down, that's an attempt to get the club back into the ground. But if we drop that trail side too early, that can easily relate into Poor low point control. So we're gonna hit some very bad miss hits. We're gonna hit it fat, we could hit it thin, still top of the golf ball. So, and of course, we're not gonna really generate that much power through it as well. Body's gonna to try too hard. I've also seen players extend their right arm into the golf ball, straighten it up early if they didn't do the right side bending. So we don't wanna do this one bit. It's okay, when do we wanna? hinge those wrists, because we do want to do it. If we don't hinge the wrists and then we have too flat of a wrists, we're not going to generate that much power. So we need to do it a little bit in our golf swing for sure. I like to see it develop in players at around left arm parallel. That's when I like to see this nice either L position or maybe kind of like a, what I call a relaxed L. It's like it's, you know, sitting down in like an inclined chair. It's a relaxed L. Either one of those is absolutely fine. So wrist hinge in a nutshell, is really more created by having nice loose grip pressure. That will keep your hands really nice and loose, wrists will be loose, you'll naturally start to gain it, getting up to your top of your golf swing there. That's how you can naturally create a little bit of wrist hinge here. But the best way to work on getting good wrist hinge is actually with this, the swing guide. So swing guide can be incredibly damaging if you do it in the wrong way, if you use it wrong. So especially it's all about the where you put it on the grip. That's all about it. I see so many players put the swing guide right at the bottom of their grip here. So when it's right at the bottom of your grip, for you to get this attaching to your left arm, you've got to create so much hinge that it actually hurts a little bit. So we actually want to move this down quite a bit, move it down quite a bit. So then you getting that onto your left arm doesn't require so much of this early hinge. So I would really have it, you can see here where I've got my Super Stroke logo on my club here. So let's say you got a classic Golf Pride logo, got your swing guide, which I would have thought probably every one of you have this because it's a couple of dollars really. And you put it here, I usually put it on the S with students 
of the Super Stroke, so it'd be the G of the Golf Pride. So it's on the S. If I feel this attaching to my forearm, that left arm parallel, I like to angle it a little bit as well. I angle it a little bit to my right hand side because that prevents me from adding in extra cup with wrist hinge as well because it's something that does happen when you wrist your wrist your hinges hinge your wrists gosh wrong with me too much if we have it angled a little bit to the right we won't really suffer from that so if i hit some shots here and i feel like this is attaching as i'm getting up to left arm parallel and then i can just then swing through the golf club i've got the wrist hinge at the right time not doing it too early so let's have a go there we go quite nice way better of a way to do it so like any training aid work on it quite a bit hit quite a good few shots with it so let's say this is out of a set of 10 balls i've hit eight already this is my eighth ball for example there we go chuck it away and then we hit one feeling like we're still doing it that's how we get these fields with training aids into our golf swing there we go nice that's how we do that there. Because if we're doing it at midpoint in the backswing, we're not going to be suffering too much from cupping the left wrist too much, getting the club too narrow, especially if we do it via the swing guide. I feel like that's the best way to work on this. If you put it on the golf club properly, like you know now from this video, and have that grip pressure nice and loose. It's the best way to go about it. So if you enjoyed the video, of course, click that like button if you want more golf instruction just like this. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video. So let's practice this. Let's not hinge our wrist too early. Don't, don't you dare do it. I don't want to see you do it at all. You're going to be hitting the golf ball a lot better. So guys, a little break in the video here to talk about the new course I have just made. And it's called the Guide to Shallowing the Golf Club in the Downswing. So if you like my rotation course, but you wanted something a little bit more in depth for shallowing the golf club, or you just want to shallow the golf club, you're frustrated that you can't do it, all the knowledge is going to be in that course. So it's going to be everything about how to shallow it via your variable movements, all the different variables to shallow it, how to match it up with your specific grip, and how to practice properly to be able to do it, which is where so many of you do not do right. So all of that's going to be in the course and it's going to be in two places. One, first place is going to be Thinkific. So that's a website, I'll put a link down in the description. That's, you can watch it on a big screen. So it's not going to only be on an app, for now like the rotation course was so you, that's going to be sold separately the rotation course is also going to be on there as well so put a link to that down in the description and it's also still going to be on skillist but the difference with it being on skillist now my courses are only going to be available to my online lesson subscribers on skillist so if you do the monthly subscription where you get unlimited lessons with me you will also in that price get the courses so with the amount of courses i'm going to make over you know the coming next six months that's going to be a big advantage to get personal instruction with me and the courses but if you want to buy just buy the courses individually they'll be on thinkific so link for both of them will be down there if you want to shadow the club you can go do that